This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News, German food and a catchy polka has some festival goers saying guten tag. We take a closer look at NDSU softball's playoff push powered by a dominant pitcher. Two students are sailing across their university to deepen their family ties. But first, MSUM president Ann Blackhurst achieves her dreams of running the Boston Marathon. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Campus News. I'm Jordan Schreyer. And I'm Ariana Babcock. Minnesota State University Moorhead President Ann Blackhurst made running her dream race a reality as she crossed the Boston Marathon finish line. Yeah, you got it! The gray, rainy, and windy day didn't stop her from completing the race in 4 hours, 38 minutes, and 30 seconds. That's roughly 20 minutes short of her goal time. While she wasn't able to meet her goal, she was relieved to cross the finish line. Honestly, <laughs> thank God I'm done. <laughs> I had I had some rough patches, you know, where it just um, I I wasn't prepared for the downhill that first half, you know, the downhill. I mean, everyone says don't go out too fast, be prepared for the downhill, but you, I just. I clearly was not prepared. So um, the second half of the race just felt really challenging because my legs were just cramping and just really sore. So it felt pretty darn good to cross the finish line. She will be running a 5K as part of a relay team in the Fargo Marathon on Saturday, May 9th. Some say this year has been a turbulent one for Minnesota State Colleges and Universities controversial education reform charting the future. Reporter Josie Jurezic takes us to a gallery walk informing students and faculty of the initiative. She looks at where charting the future has been and what it now means for students. There's more information on the website also. Here at MSUM's Gallery Walk, one of the last of Minsky's scheduled displays to share what charting the future will look like, some people are hearing of the initiative for the first time, but it's been a long time coming. And these are all just proposals at this point, okay. um, and that's what this the feedback is for from these gallery walks. It started out tough. Votes of no confidence in System Chancellor Stephen Rosenstone, the withdrawal of faculty union and student support from the initiative, and to top it all off, a rejected mediation. We put out a resolution earlier in the year that we did not support Chart in the Future and understandably we'd, we would not participate. Then, a budget threat from Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton ensuring no new funding for Minsky until faculty and administration had resolved their dispute. Taking a lot of work to The move almost immediately led to a pledge of cooperation between the parties. This is a pretty welcome resolution to, you know, a lot of discussion and, you know, a lot of conflict in some areas. Now, a recommendation from Dayton suggesting the system receive $142 million over the next two years. What that could mean for students? First and foremost, it does guarantee the tuition freeze, which is a big deal to students. Understandably, we've been lobbying for that all through the year. We're at the point where charting the future in the next uh, academic year will actually be coming back to the campuses, which is really exciting. We're looking for that opportunity where we can take that feedback and those feedback models and start actually applying them to solutions to some of these problems. Problems like a reported lack of student representation and what faculty called a blanket approach to higher education reform. So in the midst of a new agreement, agreement, hope for financial stability, and a new cooperation for a system once in greater conflict. Josie Jurezic, Campus News. Further work on charting the future is set to begin this fall between Minskew, its students, and faculty. While some MSUM students got a day off of school, others were busy presenting their research. MSUM students gather in the student union to listen to the student academic conference. Students presented their research through poster displays or speeches. Some topics discussed included poverty, cultural identity, physics, film, and music. Students say it's a good opportunity to connect with fellow classmates and faculty to hear and share ideas. Students should participate in the Student Academic Conference basically to network with other students and also professors and just perform a bunch of research and get a bunch of experience. The conference is held every year in the spring. Many MSUM students say they are outraged at the school's plan to build what they call the Mosaic Center. With construction starting up this May, reporter Nick Broadway asked students and faculty how they feel about the renovation. They say actions speak louder than words. 
Last December, students held a silent protest outside this meeting room, where the 2015 union renovation is being discussed. They're protesting the Mosaic Center, which combines student-run diversity organizations into one space. It erases our identities, and that's on par with cultural genocide. That was four months ago. Today, using posters and petitions, students and faculty are still fighting to keep their spaces outside this renovation. Students do need these spaces to have their identities affirmed instead of judged and to have these students um, have a place where they can just really be themselves and not have to worry about what the outside world thinks about them. Their efforts are not going unheard. The fact that there will be a mosaic center does not necessarily mean that there will not be a separate and autonomous women's center or rainbow dragon center. Chief Diversity Officer Donna Brown is collecting campus-wide data to gauge the need of student minorities. It's really a matter of listening to what are the needs. She says keeping both the Mosaic Center and existing autonomous spaces is possible. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be wasting my time doing this data collection. But students think the Mosaic Center itself is dangerous, even if other spaces are kept. If you're trying to have the campus LGBTQA organizations in the same room as some of the campus religious organizations, expect we're going to get along. You know, that's one of the reasons why some of the safe spaces are there to begin with. To many students, these spaces mean much more. You're taking away something that's important to me. You're taking away my home and why I came to this college. I just wish I was listened to. I wish I was validated on this campus and my experiences matter, but I don't know if they do necessarily because I'm not listened to. With photographer Eric Anderson, Nick Broadway, Campus News. The American Indian Research and Resource Center will remain after the new Mosaic Center is built. Faculty have not confirmed if other organizations will stay, but the issue is still being discussed. Building planes and bridges was the mantra of the day at NDSU as some middle and high school students put their brains to work. The students gathered from all around North Dakota to take part in the Science Olympiad. Their creations included airplanes, bubble rockets, and bridges, among other things. After working with their coaches for months, the students displayed their projects to be judged by some NDSU students. We come here to have fun. The key to the Science Olympiad I've always felt is fun. And sure, if we get some medals along the way, that's great. But whatever we learn from the process uh, helps us when we go on down the road. The students' projects were judged in different categories, including engineering, chemistry, and technology. Many know someone who's had cancer and the terrible side effects its treatment brings. But what if the side effects were no more? ToxoSafe is a treatment where cancer patients will get fewer side effects while receiving chemotherapy. NDSU student Projocta Kelkarni has been researching this approach in hopes the treatment will no longer weaken its patients. It works by drug carriers recognizing where the cancer tissue is and delivering the drug only to that area. Kelkarni is currently testing the treatment on mice with pancreatic cancer. Update to a story we brought you earlier this year, cockroaches earned an NDSU student her way to free college. Bridget Eklund received the Goldwater Scholarship, which will cover her tuition, fees, books, and living expenses. The scholarship will total $7,500 each year. Eklund is currently using cockroaches to study a bacterium that can cause a deadly disease called tularemia. The Goldwater Foundation has presented scholarships worth about $48 million since its beginning in 1987. Colleges around the U.S. are part of a growing campaign to raise awareness about sexual assaults on campuses. Reporter Maddie Jalseth went to slut the play at NDSU and shows us how performers are bringing a statement to audiences. I hate myself right now. Slut the Play is a story of a young woman who gets raped in the back of a cab by her guy friends who she went to go party with. She tells her side of the story while other people blame her, the victim of the rape. Haven't you ever done a stupid thing? I really like the message that the play talks about, um, about the rape culture and slut shaming and how language can affect everything we do. In that moment, I was drunk. When women do things that put them, that they either get sexually assaulted or they um, 
sleep around or anything like that. In our culture, I think the go-to word is slut, no matter what people think about. Students at NDSU say they are excited to put on a play with such a powerful message. I auditioned and I got a role and it's been really fun, so I'm glad that I was a part of it. According to a study by the National Research Council, about 80% of sexual assaults go unreported, a statistic these ladies hope to reduce. With photographer Maddie Werdinger, Maddie Joseph, Campus News. Concordia College brought a small piece of Deutschland to Moorhead. Veronica Utech reports how the community came together to celebrate with food, music, and everything German. Um, willkommen zum Deutschen Fest. Ich hoffe, ihr habt Spaß. Welcome to German Fest, and I hope you have a lot of fun. That is what the Concordia German Club says while welcoming the community to German Fest. Their goal was for everybody to enjoy and learn more about German culture. We have the German candy, which is really nice, and the German music, so it's pretty authentic. German sausage, sauerkraut, cabbage, and Kuchen was served, and everybody stopped to admire the German decorations. It turns out well. I think if we can get the audience to participate like they are now, um, uh, whether it's eating food or singing along or just uh, listening to the music, I think that's great. The festival goers really got in a celebratory mood, linking arms with strangers and singing German folk songs together as a community. And it certainly seemed like a wonderful day for all who attended. With photographer Randa Cody, Veronica Utech, Campus News. This is an annual program that takes place in the spring. Pop it, lock it, and drop your money off at NDSU. NDSU's annual Hip Hop for Hope charity event was this week. The slogan this year was all about that bass. The event hopes to feature local rappers, singers, and break dancers. Proceeds will be given to Unseen Ministries, a nonprofit that helps fight human trafficking and works to end hunger and poverty. Next week, reporter Haley Foster takes us behind the scenes with the sponsors of the event, the NDSU Hip Hop Team. For some students, sailing a styrofoam boat in a swimming pool can be as good as going out to sea. Reporter Andy Weston tells us how members of NDSU Sailing Club share ties that go a bit deeper. Jenna Gallagher grew up sailing with her family, a tradition inspiring her to form the NDSU Sailing Club, a passion that's obvious when she talks about going out on the water. Whereas the scows is like this, and you usually have a strap for your feet, so you're not hanging on, you're just holding yourself by your feet. It's kind of fun. Jenna knew it would be a challenge to get people from the area involved. So we just kind of started as a joke, we didn't really think it would take off at all, and more and more people just start getting interested and they're like, that sounds awesome. And so it just kept growing from there. With the club up and running, the group decided to widen its reach. They gathered with MSUM students to challenge each other at boat building, knot tying, and test taking. While bringing these schools together, Jenna relied on her family ties. My sister is a freshman here at MSUM. And so I, you know, I told her, I was like, hey, we should do a team event and you know, kind of compete against each other, have a friendly competition. Shannon was more than happy to work with her sister. Thanks. Aww. My sister especially has really gotten into it, and so she started the NDSU Sailing Club and kind of just brought me with it. I'm, even though we go to different colleges, it's been awesome that we've been able to do this together. A familial bond tying two schools together in their passion for sailing. Andy Weston, Campus News. The Gallagher sisters' ultimate goal is to expand the sailing club into a tri-college event between NDSU, MSUM, and Concordia. Most students are used to seeing birds, squirrels, and dogs around campus, but not many students are expecting to see parrots. MSUM professor Chris Chastain walks with his two parrots, one on each shoulder around campus. After doing research work in Australia and getting to see mini parrots, he says he needed two of his own. He has had the Congo Hannah for 20 years and added the Timna Parrot Muffin to the family 10 years later. While he steps onto campus, he says students often want to visit with his pets. Although he says he can expect a kiss or two, he says he spoils them like a child. Like a couple of two-year-olds, very much, much like having two-year-olds. You know, they can't take care of themselves, but they need play, they need food. Parrots have an estimated lifespan of up to 50 years. 
Concordia professor Jonathan Clark received a unique opportunity to travel all the way to Germany to help trace a famous singer's ancestry. Reporter Betsy Harmson tells us how the professor was part of a national TV show to find a long-lost relative. Saying, uh, you know, what do you notice on this page? Jonathan Clark is an expert on German studies, so it's no wonder he found himself shoulder to shoulder with Josh Groban, translating ancient German documents for him to view. You can see the whole stars and everything. The TLC show, Who Do You Think You Are?, helps stars trace their ancestry back to their origins. For Josh Groban, that led him to Germany. But they couldn't tell me the name of this person until I signed all sorts of confidentiality uh, statements. And then um, when I did, uh, they told me it was Josh Groban. And I said, well, that's kind of cool. You know, my, my daughter just loved Josh Groban. After looking at some extremely old documents, Groban found that he had a great grandfather eight times removed that had actually been a brilliant astronomer, having been mentioned by Sir Isaac Newton. Interesting. There I sat in, um, in a church in Bietingheim, Germany, and um, I got to guide Josh Groban along with his ancestry. A free trip to Germany, I can live with that, right? Who would have thought that a trip to Germany could answer some questions in a star's family tree and put a Concordia professor on national television? With photographer Jared Schumacher, Betsy Harmson, wow. Campus News. To watch the full episode, go to the German department's webpage on concordiacollege.edu. As the stress of the coming end of the semester starts to sink in, one store owner is creating a way for students to let out their creativity and take a break. Creatively Uncorked is an art store in the Moorhead Center Mall that does more than sell art equipment. The store hosts painting parties for people to come in, paint, and socialize. The goal of the parties is to allow people with no painting experience to have some fun splashing, paint, and simply relax. So what we do mostly is uh, we do painting parties of the larger canvases and we'll do private events right here in this space. And then we do public events around town at liquor serving establishments where you can have a drink, paint a picture, hang out with your friends, take home a masterpiece. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Creatively Uncorked hosts similar painting parties in Fargo, Detroit Lakes, and other surrounding areas. Like the old saying goes, you never forget how to ride a bike. Reporter Haley Warnicke tells us how college students can dust off their training wheels and grab a bike at the Great Rides Bike Share program. The feeling of wind blowing through your hair, the sound of wheels spinning across pavement, and the throbbing of your legs pumping up and down to go faster and faster, the Great Rides B Cycle may bring this feeling back to students and citizens of the Fargo-Moorhead area. I'm amazed at all of the students that are riding around on bikes. It's so refreshing to see a bunch of 20-year-olds riding around, ringing the bells, giggling on the bikes. Great Rides Bike Share Program has 101 bikes and 11 bike docks located in downtown Fargo and the NDSU campus. When we're expecting 100 or 200 rides a day, we're getting 500 or 600 rides a day. So it has been just amazing. The program is mainly NDSU based, but the expansion to other colleges has come to mind for some employees. Once the other colleges see the great success we're having on the campus of NDSU, we'll see requests to, to push this to the south and east. The employees at Great Rides say the community is behind the bikes and is in charge of taking care of them. With photographer Louis Johnson, Haley Wernke, Campus News. A day pass is $6 and a year-long membership is $75. And now we turn it on over to Shaley Meyer for a look at this week's sports. Shaley, the Bison football players had a chance to show off some of their talents. They definitely did, Ariana. Football fans in Fargo may be shopping for new jerseys after they see where their favorite former Bison end up in the upcoming NFL Draft. After their fourth consecutive FCS National Championship, several Bison are hoping to continue their careers at the next level. Eight former Bison players participated in NDSU's Pro Day on March 26th, including John Crockett, who was highlighted by ESPN's Draft Day. Pro Day allowed the men to showcase their talents running drills in front of scouts from the Minnesota Vikings, Jacksonville Jaguars, and Philadelphia Eagles. The day of Pro Day, I was just excited to be out there. I didn't think I did that well at first, but then after seeing the numbers, I actually did better than I thought. 
The NFL Draft begins April 30th and ends May 2nd. Rookie training camps begin on May 8th. And while some Bison football players are getting ready for the draft, one is starting over in another sport. Kerry Woods is giving up his spot on the football team to walk on to the basketball team after three seasons, including one year as a redshirt freshman. He'll have two years of eligibility for basketball. The 6-foot, 195-pound receiver had 16 catches last season for 165 yards. He made an impact in the FCS quarterfinal playoff win over Coastal Carolina with four catches for 48 yards. But now he's taking his talents to the hardwood. At Bemidji High School, Woods was a three-year starter in basketball and averaged 20 points and six rebounds per game in his career. The North Dakota State softball team has been tearing up the diamond this season, posting a record of 35-7 and with their star pitcher, Krista Menke, leading the way. Turner Bloffus takes us to Ellig Sports Complex for a look at the Bison Ace. The NDSU Bison are at the top of the Summit League, and one huge factor is their senior pitcher, Krista Menke. The right-handed hurler has been ripping through batting orders and currently holds a 25-2 record. We knew that we always have a tough preseason, and so we go out there and give it our best shot, and um, this year we just happened to come out on top on a lot of them, so it was good. Menke was dominant against conference foe Fort Wayne. Number five threw her first career perfect game and followed it up with a one-hitter in the second half of the Saturday doubleheader. Head coach Darren Mueller said Menke's teammates feed off her play. And so I think it says a lot. We always talk about how your body language and your approach is out there when you're pitching. And if she stays and just is Krista when she's out there pitching, we do a great job. Menke's gem was her third no-hitter of the season and the fourth of her career. Opponents in the batter's box struggled to even put the ball in play, as Menke has struck out 301 hitters on the season. The senior Bison is one of the main team leaders, and her coaches constantly push her. Coach Mueller noted Menke's ability to accept criticism and continue to improve. I think that's, that's a big plus for us, and I think it says a lot about her to be, to be able to see these good performances and also maybe have a bad one. It's nice just to have a pitcher that's really uh, has that maturity to be able to do that. A pitcher is nothing without their catcher, and having Alyssa Rena behind the plate is another advantage for Menke. The prolific battery credits their successes to their strong chemistry. So I think that she can really accomplish anything that she puts her mind to. We talk on and off the field about pretty much everything, so we're pretty close as a battery. Menke and the rest of the Bison hope their strong chemistry can carry over to the Summit League tournament. Menke said her team doesn't focus on one singular goal but a second straight trip to the NCAA tournament is likely at the top of their list. With photographer Meg Keim, Turner Bloffus, Campus News Sports. NDSU heads to Mobile, Alabama to take on the number 21 ranked University of South Alabama in a three-game series this weekend. This is the Bison's ninth consecutive 30-win season. One of Concordia's student athletes is taking home an award for not only his effort on the track, but also his work in the classroom. Cobber junior Gabe Wright received the Mayak Elite 22 award in track and field. The award is presented to the student athlete who competes at the top level in his or her event and has the highest GPA among other candidates. Wright has a 3.995 GPA and was named to the all-conference team in the heptathlon as well as Mayak honorable mention honors in the high jump. Wright is a Moorhead, Minnesota native who is majoring in mathematics. As the national debate continues over whether or not college athletes should be paid to play, the University of North Dakota is preparing to pay some athletes the full cost of their attendance and some living expenses. Athletic Director Brian Faison says concrete numbers will be available soon. For now, UND is figuring out how much it will cost to pay athletes with what they're calling full amended grant and aid. This will include tuition, mandatory fees, room and board, books, and personal expenses like transportation. Shaylee, I wish that I could get paid for playing sports. Sounds like the life. Yeah, you better start practicing, Jordan. I would probably just stick to anchoring. <laughs> Thanks, Shaylee. What began as another role in another play became a new opportunity for an MSUM student. Haley Warnicky reports how one student uses his love for film to create a video trailer for a play that's known for pushing the envelope. Seeing the barely clothed actors on stage may have made some want to scream. The Scream being a play about a god that wants to be recognized as a divine being. There are so many different variations of a scream, from joy to pleasure to terror, and they all 
they all happen in this show. There's so many different variations of the scream. McCade Riemann created a short video to promote the play, and he put it on YouTube to attract attention. How can I get people to come to this? And how can I display all the crazy physical stuff that we do in the best way possible? He hoped to grab people's attention. To do this, he added his own type of hype. There's this one flip that Jack, the um, one of the break dancers does where he lands on just square on his back and I reversed it after he landed so he so it's like he flies up so I just think that part turned out really cool some of the people in the audience didn't know what to expect but a few had one thing that really stuck out in their minds the dancing and all their movements like the musical parts uh, I thought it was beautifully done and I definitely could not do it. Dancing was very wild. The uh, young guys, when they did dance, boy, they used a lot of energy. Since April 6, McCade's video has nearly 600 views on YouTube with photographer Eric Anderson. Scream. Haley Warnke, Campus News. McCade says he hopes to make trailer videos for future MSUM productions. And that's it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with the scream. Thanks for joining us and have a great week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the School of Communication and Journalism at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television.